champions and the boxing superstars, where are you? I'm waiting, let's fight. I'm the most avoided boxer. The untouchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. All right, so I wanted to come on here and actually this, this, this video is going to be a two-parter, so uh, make sure you guys pay attention to the timestamps for what you want to hear me talk about. But uh, we'll start with Kenneth Sims Jr., the boss man. He, he really was the guy that stole the show on the Showtime card because, you know, this is a guy that's, that's really got it from the mud, done it the hard way, done it the honest way. I have so much respect for the way this guy's career is, is has gone and how it's going because um, he would have a guy in Kenneth Sims Jr. I remember so well, like late 2017, uh, 28, 2018 as well. He was losing fights to guys like Rolando Chania and and Samuel, uh, Tsunami Samuel Taya. You know, he was he was struggling. Like he was genuinely struggling on that showbox level, and it looked like his career was going nowhere and going nowhere fast. And that's the beautiful thing about boxing is like you could be down in the dumps. You could be, you know, quote unquote, a nobody. You could be a bum, as they say. But then if you if you have the grit to 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 actually improve and, and find ways to win fights, you know, you can turn your career around. And that's what happened to Kenneth Sims Jr. Ever since that last loss in 2018 to Tsunami Samuel Taya, he's reeled off seven straight victories, seven in a row. And um and, and, and the most recent one, other seven, was this one right here against the always tough, always dangerous, and always formidable Batiara Akhmedov. Now, really interesting fight. Uh, it, was a it, was, it was a close fight going into the later rounds. Kenneth Sims was getting beat up at points in this fight. But, you know, there were also times where he was flashing some of those skills out, the, you know, out that southpaw stand. Sometimes he was switch hitting. So he showed you the skills. He got taken to those deep, dark places. Um, but ultimately, he was able to grind it out. He was able to win. He was able to just to be a little bit better, just a little bit better, a little bit sharper, um, a little bit more effective than Batir Akhmedov. And he wins the fight, and the fight was a WBA eliminator fight, so that now puts him in a position to potentially fight Roley, right? Uh, who just won the belt, which I, honestly, if there, was, if there was a guy that deserved a shot, I know O'Hara Davies, I think, is next in line for the shot, but... I, I wish O'Hara could just wait because I feel like Kenneth Sims, he's gone through so much. I mean, this is a guy in Kenneth Sims. He beat Elvis Rodriguez who was a top when he was a top prospect and kind of popped that, you know, balloon, that hype train before it got going. Um, and then uh, what's crazy was even after he beat Elvis Rodriguez, it, it took him years to really get back on TV because he was he had he had to take these little fights on on shows that almost nobody in boxing even knew about. So it's like he won a big fight as the B-side and didn't even get rewarded for it right away. And I feel like this should be his reward, him getting a title shot. But just a great, uh, 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 awesome fighter. A guy that I think has a is a formidable opponent against any 140-pounder in the world. You know, Kenneth Sims Jr., I think he said it best at the press conference. He said that, you know, he's a boxer, but he don't mind a fight. And, and you know, he can, he can definitely be a fighter that uh, will outbox you for, for rounds on end. But if, as, as you just saw in this fight with Batir Akhmedov, um, if it comes down to that, if it comes down to needing to scrap and needing to fight, then he's, def he's definitely capable of that too. So um, good on him, good on him. And then as far as Akhmedov goes, I kind of feel for the guy and my, my heart goes out to him because this is a guy that probably should have already been champion because he's had two fights, you know, against the likes of Mario Barrios and Alberto Pollo in which the, he had legitimate gripes and legitimate claims to winning those fights. They were very close fights, but a lot of people thought he won some of those fights. And it's crazy, no matter how well he fights and no matter how much he seems to do, he just can't quite get over the hump in the big fight. So my heart goes out to him because, you know, we've talked a lot about Ryan Garcia on this channel. And there's been a lot of discussion in boxing about Ryan Garcia and how when Javante Davis took him to those deep, dark places, he didn't have the gumption to continue, even though he did get caught with a big body shot, right? And he would have a guy in Akhmedov who kind of is like, is the, he's, he's different than a lot of fighters in boxing. He's not the, he's not the big name. But he continues to consistently perform at a high level against high-level fighters. And uh, even when he deserves it not, he's not getting it. So I, I, I just hope if it – I know boxing likes to punish guys for losses, but I, I hope he's one of the guys that's not treated that way and Showtime brings him back and puts him in good fights. You know, I hope um, – you know, I think the next fight he should have, 
I would, I would like to see him and Hedemi Esponsa, who just lost to Bruno Matias. I think him versus Akhmedov would be an amazing fight. Um, and one that I think is, is very winnable for um, Akhmedov. So um, that's my thoughts on that. But yeah, shout out to the boss man, Kenneth Sims, who really is uh, becoming a great redemption story in the sport right now. Um, and then you have the uh, second part of the video, switching gears. Jason Maloney. You know, I, I just had a chance to talk to Jason Maloney when I was in Vegas. Jason Maloney is a good fighter. You know, this is a guy, Maloney, who he's fought arguably the best in the world. You know, a guy, guy that's the pride of the country I'm in right now. Naya won Monster in a way. Um, got stopped by him in seven rounds. But, you know, you look at some of the other guys he's beaten. He beat Joshua Greer when Greer was actually, you know, something at the end of weight. He beat uh, Leonardo Baez. So he, he he's beaten some good guys in the weight class. And um, he told me when I interviewed him that, going into this fight of Vincent Astrolabio that, you know, uh, he feels like it's his time and he's going to rule the division. And now with Inouye gone and the belts fragmenting, um, it's the division's, you know, at a stage now where, like, it has to find a new guy. It has to move in a new direction. And um, this, is a, this is a fight I was very excited about because, you know, Vincent Astrolabio have been picking up some good wins against the likes of uh, Guillermo Rigondeaux and um, a few others, you know, Another hard punching, explosive Filipino fighter. So it was a good matchup, and make no mistakes about it. There were many times in this fight where Ashlavia would close that gap, and you saw how dangerous he could be. You saw um, the fact that you know Maloney had to really be on his p's and q's and stay mentally sharp for the whole fight. But ultimately, Maloney stayed mentally sharp for the majority of the fight. I thought he boxed very well. I thought he did a great job mixing his up, mi mixing up his attack from mid range and the outside, and Ashalavio kept searching for that big shot to, to to iron out Maloney, and the big shot never came. And he was never able to get him out of there, and Maloney was able to you know win a you know grind out a, a really good win. Now it, he's now world champion. Congrats to him. You know the good guys don't nice guys don't always finish last. He's a testament to that, but. uh it was, it was revealed after the fight that Maloney, apparently, his uh, his hand was broken in the third round. So he boxed for nine rounds, but one of his hands broken. And he never even said anything about it to his trainer. So you want, you want to talk about a warrior? You want to talk about a guy who's a champion? You want to talk about a guy that doesn't make excuses? That's Jason Maloney. So um, Australia, he got another one. You know, Australia is just in a great era for boxing right now. Um, they, they continue to produce champion after champion after champion. And Maloney adds his name to the list. So um, congratulations to him. Uh, Bantamweight's going to be very interesting now because you got, uh, let me see, who else is champion? I mean, the belts are the belts are all fragmented right now. So we got to wait and see who he fights. But um, he's champion. And I, 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 would, I, would, I would anticipate in the near future that uh, in the next year or so, he winds up uh, getting a unification fight. But uh, that's the news. That's my thoughts on, like, Maloney and Ashalabio, you know, Vince Ashalabio is still a good fighter. Um, still definitely worth our time and our attention. Want to see him back. This is not a slide on him. He just he just couldn't impose his style on the fight to beat a guy like Maloney. And that's okay because Maloney is a good fighter. Um, Kenneth Sims Jr., great redemption story in boxing. So, um, yeah, that's my take on, that, that's, that's my take on those two. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you guys... Take the time to subscribe. Like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me. But I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take care, guys. Thank you for watching another video on the Untouchable True Sports Empire. We're here at the Hatanaka Boxing Gym in Nagoya, Japan. And uh, for more great videos just like this one, make sure you guys click right here.